so I don't know if you were watching my stream. Maybe you weren't. I don't know. This is going up at a different time, so stands to reason probably you weren't. Uh, if you were watching my stream, you probably noticed that when I was going over the ranking and going over the format for the LPL, the audio kept cutting out, and that sucks. But instead of just editing it and trying to struggle with cutting audio, uh, I decided to just re-record kind of my thoughts on the basically breakdown of my ranking of the groups, which is what this video is going to be about. So if you want to learn about my thoughts on the format change, uh, that video is kind of more or less intact, and it'll be coming out tomorrow instead with hopefully a blog post we'll see depends on my motivation and the other stuff i get done today but just to talk about the ranking which more people will probably care about here's my basically pre-seed ranking for the lpl teams for those of you who don't know how the format works most important thing is you're divided into groups based on whether or not you or how you performed in spring, I should say. So for example, EDG is pool four in group one, JDG is pool one in group one, FPX is pool two in group one, and top Thunder Talk is pool three in group one. This is true of all teams except for all the way down to group D, which has five teams in it. What will happen is the bottom two teams will get put into group B of the main heat, and all the nine teams at the top will get put into Group A of the main heat. Group A will play one single round robin against each other. Group B will play one single round robin against each other. Top four of Group B will get placed against bottom two of Group A in the playoffs for a play-in phase. After that, the top ten teams will compete in playoffs as normal. <laughs> so that is more or less all you need to know about this one. I think the... To get started, I just wanted to rank only how I think the group stages will go, nothing deeper from there. <clears throat> going through the teams in terms of major changes, Edward Gaming, they ended up going with just solo kill exclusively starting in the top team because Ala is ending up going to AL, so they have that going for them. The other element of it that the Edward Gaming have is they've kind of scrapped the entire rookie roster element. They've brought in Cryin and Wink from IG. Uh, basically, Wink, a very strong individual player. I had him effectively as the third best support in LPL last split, just in terms of his ability to execute on teamfight engages. Uh, for that reason, I have Edward Gaming moving up to third place instead of fourth place in their group. Uh, I think the mid lane stability will also be a huge factor. Do I think this will bring Edward Gaming up to second tier? Probably not. I do think that there is potentially a possibility because FPX have a very limited individual style. It has kind of been telegraphed, kind of understood. Their drafting is still very flawed. But in general, I would expect FPX to continue to, to kind of perform as the sec best second best team in this group, they have added the Onyol to the lineup, who is from their academy team. So depending on how he performs, FPX could potentially drop to third place. Edward Gaming could take second, but I think that this is very unlikely overall, since I don't think Edward Gaming will drastically improve uh, with just the mid and support swap. Um, the JDG roster, I expect to kind of remain firmly in the top spot. I think Sheer will continue to develop and eventually take over for Flandra. In terms of Thunder Talk, uh, unless the meta is super Talia favored, this team is I I don't think they'll they'll be they'll be good. So that's why they're they're, they're fourth here. And I think that that's like the most significant change. As you see in these group stages, it is more likely that we will see swaps between third and fourth place rather than really, really major meaningful swaps. That will allow teams to go into group A of the main heat or group B of the main heat compared to last split. So second group, very important significant changes. BLG, pretty much nothing. LGD, also pretty much nothing. Uh, effectively the same roster. Royal Never Give Up did see significant changes with Breathe going to Weibo Gaming, and we have added ZDC. I think you, depending on how you frame this, this could be seen as a potential upgrade for RNG, considering that, yes, Breathe is significantly better mechanically. I had him as my 13 top laner and all pro despite RNG's performances. I think ZDC is a much more 
agency oriented player who can make something happen for this royal team that very frustratingly felt like they stalled out too much uh, ended up just bleeding out and doing nothing the other element of rng is Juan Fong, who despite my feelings on him personally has performed extremely well uh in the past has consistently been a very strong ad carry so there's potential for upgrades to those positions i think the most interesting thing is xzz staying on the roster their academy mid laner i think that if he starts more games you have the potential for rng to basically move up a tier to third over lgd i think that's very likely these teams are somewhat even uh in summer so i think it's very likely rng will take the the third spot and then of course team we i think a lot of people are sort of down on team we but i think with the prince being the prince kind of like shuffle changing you'll have a significantly better performing we i think the we looked really good mid split after when they had kind of committed to stay when they brought prince back in their team play ended up being very strange they ended up almost winning out versus nip in playoffs like they they had a five game series so i think we are still should be considered firmly for second place in this group um lng omg rare adam and top esports are in the sujo group uh group c i think lng for me the changes that we've seen are shadow coming in with weiwei to share the jungle spot uh, Zika also gaining Xiaoyu. I think Zika was probably the best performing player on this team for much of the split. I know a lot of people like Gala, that's fine. Um, just respectfully disagree. Zika trying to find fight angles and engages when his team kind of did nothing. A lot of doing nothing happening on this team. It's possible Shadow will add more agency to the team as well. Um, but it's, it's really hard to say. I felt like a lot of the problems with this team were just, you could never tell if they were actually going to do something in a given day. Uh, I've kept them in seconds tentatively, uh, but that's, that's kind of the way it is. Uh, top esports, most significant change is adding to the coaching staff, Maokai coming in to be head coach. And then of course, uh, they have Sia coming in to positional coach effectively for Cream. Uh, some speculation that Sia will start some games. I feel like that's only likely to happen if Cream drastically underperforms expectations. Um, and then, of course, you have OMG. The biggest change is Starry is going to be permanently starting with Abel no longer on the roster. And then, of course, for uh, Rare Adam, you ended up acquiring Dwe from Ultra Prime, which I think makes their support role significantly better uh, overall. I also think that we'll be in a position where you can see that team performing better than OMG given those changes to the bot lane. I think they will be pretty significant, which is why I have the third and fourth seeds again swapped. So uh, we're consistently seeing four seed team making changes to put them up from bottom of the barrel to third place in their group, but probably not enough to make it into the uh, main top heat that we're looking at. And then, of course, Group D, we have probably the most shakeups and the most changes in a given group. You have IG drastically changing their roster. <laughs> IG historically have been a team that have favored promoting internally and um, promoting from their youth team. I think the biggest difference would be the biggest anomaly in their history is the acquisition of Rookie and Kakao in 2015, but pretty much all the other times you see them very consistently promoting rookies, promoting eternally, being willing to sell players at premium. So I think that it makes sense that this IG made the changes that they did by kind of swapping a uh, vampire and wink out and basically selling also their their mid so i think as a result ig's performance will suffer a lot uh Tiandrum back also is a big is a big thing the the kind of regular one trick guy uh so i think that and then nani who was a top laner previously played mid for a bit in their uh youth team is now the starting mid laner so i think that this team should be expected to be last place but it's it's uh i mean i can't fault them for their business decision right <laughs> that's that's the way it is uh ultra prime i think it is a bit disappointing that they lost joy but they also acquired ching tian 
um, and Nikkei. And I think Nikkei's not bad. And Qingtian, I think, is an obvious upgrade over Decade. So from that perspective, I think it should be expected that Ultra Prime goes from the last place of the group to the fourth place of the group. Again, we're seeing kind of that trend continue. And then um, in terms of the overall shakeups, probably people are more interested in the Anyone's Legend roster changes and the Weibo Gaming roster changes. So uh, Anyone's Legend has added Ala. I think the most more significant thing still to think about is uh, Tabe, head coach, having more time with this roster. And then, of course, Weibo Gaming acquired Breathe and Tarzan. I think the biggest... Not Tarzan. Not Tarzan. Tarzan. Uh, I think the biggest thing to note with this team, of course, is that you have Breathe, who doesn't create a lot of agency he just performs extremely mechanically well um and then of course if we're we're lacking playmaking on this team because they don't take very obvious fights i got very frustrated in playoffs when they were up like 10k gold and refusing to fight and just continuing to play out the map um then that's going to be an issue and i think tarzan is someone who's like comfortable farming breathe is someone who's comfortable farming so yes you're upgrading the overall mechanical individual skill of the team but you're still in a position where i need someone who's going to create agency cre create play opportunities and then of course you still have Shao who drastically underperforming last split perhaps this split uh Shao who's pool will be more in vogue um more of like a cinder mage player um Played a lot of rise historically things like that so it's possible that we'll see more from Shao who this split uh, than we did last split, but it was a little bit underwhelming previously. So that's going to be your, your biggest question mark. Uh, unironically, of course, the Anyone's Legend biggest question mark also uh, is related to mid. I do like Shanks. I do think he's a strong player in many circumstances, but it just felt like when Anyone's Legend lost their ability to play Azir because Azir was global banned, they just couldn't win a game after that. So my biggest question marks for these teams are mid, and that's why NIP remains sort of in the top spot for me because NIP's main advantages are their drafts are strong and the rook they have rookie. <laughs> so uh, I think if the two teams that should be considered contenders had stronger, more consistent mid performances, then I would consider them able to disrupt NIP. But we'll see. I think that that will probably be the most interesting dynamic in the pre-seed stage or in the prelim stage, uh, which will be the Anyone's Legend, Weibo Gaming, and NIP dynamic. You could make arguments for all three of them to take the top spot. And of course, um, what I have shaking out is still kind of like the predictable uh, Nip first, Weibo second, Anyone's Legend third, but... Um, I could see a case where, for me, the, the most difficult decision was between Weibo and Anyone's Legend second, third. Um, so I think that those are very realistic. Also, I think NIP, even though they only lane swapped twice uh, in the spring season, I do think lack of lane swaps and not having that option hurts them a bit because their, their bot lane is, uh, is, is kind of weak. So we'll see how these, these play out. And if I am correct in my predictions, uh, we'll probably talk about Group A and Group B when the play-in phase ends, and I'll see you all for the streams.